In this video, an AI robot, aka ChatGTP, is going to reveal how to overcome social anxiety disorder completely. Hey, my name is Sebastian van der Schrier. I'm a former social anxiety disorder sufferer and a social confidence coach and the host of the popular podcast show, Social Anxiety Solutions. And have you noticed that there is this AI robot called ChatGTP that you can have whole conversations with? And it is almost uh, like the most wise friend that you've ever met and it can give you any answer that Google can give you but 10 you know 100 times faster and it's like it's a real person it's unbelievable so it's some kind of a language model that's been out for I don't know a month several months I discovered it about uh, a month ago started playing around with it and started asking it questions and was just absolutely amazed at the answers that I was getting, you know, absolutely spectacular. You know, this is changing the world. It's, it's, it's really incredible. Anyway, um, I asked it uh, all sorts of psychological questions and got amazing answers. I'm like, wow, how does it know this? You know, this is, this is, this is spectacular. Turns out that it is trained in psychoanalytic theory, cognitive behavioral therapy, um, you know, all of these different kinds of psychological modalities, and it is up to date to 2021, right? Spectacular. So I decided to put it to the test and start asking it some questions about the current state of social anxiety and its treatment and the solutions to it and what is possible and how you can overcome social anxiety disorder completely. And I think you'll find the answers that you're getting pretty darn damn spectacular okay i was trying to keep it cool there but you know let's see so i'll ask it some provocative questions and um stay until the end this is gonna rock your world okay you ready let's go now the robot gives long elaborate answers and repeats certain things and for the sake of making this as interesting and concise as possible i've only kept the text that is relevant for the conversation here we go me why can you not get rid of social anxiety completely the ai social anxiety disorder is a chronic condition that can be managed but it may not be possible to completely eliminate it this is because the underlying causes of social anxiety disorder are complex and may involve a combination of genetic environmental and psychological factors cognitive behavioral therapy cbt and other forms of therapy can help individuals with social anxiety disorder to identify and change negative thought patterns and behaviors, but it may not be able to change the underlying cause of the disorder. Medication can also help to reduce symptoms, but again, it may not be able to eliminate the disorder completely. Me? Why does my therapist say I have to gradually face my fears? The robot. Gradually facing your fears is a key component of exposure therapy, which is a type of CBT that is often used to treat social anxiety disorder. Exposure therapy works on the principle that by gradually exposing yourself to the situations or social interactions that trigger your anxiety, you can learn to manage your anxiety in real life situations. This process is called desensitization. It will help you to gradually build up your tolerance to the things that make you anxious, so that over time, they will no longer trigger such a strong response. Me. You mean that even though you face your fears, the fears don't go away completely? The AI. That is correct. Even though exposure therapy or other forms of treatment can help to reduce the severity of your anxiety and improve your ability to manage it, the fear may not go away completely. Me? Why might someone with social anxiety disorder have trouble with exposure therapy? The AI. Exposure therapy can be an effective treatment for SAD, but it may not be appropriate or effective for everyone. Some people may have trouble with it because they're unable to tolerate the level of anxiety that it can produce. Other reasons why people might have trouble with exposure therapy include trauma. It may trigger memories or feelings associated with the trauma. Co-occurring conditions. Social anxiety disorder often co-occurs with other mental health conditions such as depression or PTSD that can make exposure therapy more challenging, uncomfortable. It requires the individual to confront their fears and anxiety in a direct way, which can be uncomfortable and difficult. 
may be hard for some people to engage in the therapy. Not suitable for everyone. Exposure therapy may not be suitable for everyone, particularly those who have severe symptoms of social anxiety disorder or those who have co-occurring conditions, such as PTSD. Relapse. There's a risk of relapse after treatment is completed. This is why it's important to continue working on managing symptoms even after treatment is complete. It may not work for everyone. And exposure therapy may not be suitable for certain individuals, such as those who have severe symptoms of SAD, social anxiety disorder, or those who have co-occurring conditions such as PTSD. Me. Um, why is it not suitable for those with severe symptoms of SAD or PTSD? The robot. They may find it difficult to tolerate the level of anxiety that exposure therapy can produce, and they may not be able to engage in the therapy effectively. This can make it less effective and less beneficial for them. Me? So if you have severe SAD or PTSD and you do exposure therapy, it can even be harmful? If so, why? The AI. It may not be appropriate or effective for everyone, especially those with severe symptoms. In some cases, exposure therapy may be harmful for individuals with severe SAD or PTSD because it can lead to an increase in symptoms such as overwhelming anxiety and panic attacks. Exposure therapy may be too intense for them to handle and it may cause more distress than improvement. For individuals with PTSD, exposure therapy may trigger traumatic memories and it may lead to an increase in symptoms such as flashbacks, nightmares and avoidance behaviors. Additionally, exposure therapy may not be the best fit for people with severe SAD or PTSD because it might not address the underlying emotional and psychological causes of their conditions. How amazing are these answers, right? I mean, I'll continue. Here we go. Me. Okay. So if exposure therapy doesn't get rid of the fear completely, do other CBT approaches make it go away completely? The AI. CBT is an effective treatment for social anxiety disorder, but it is not always possible for the fear to go away completely. However, CBT can help individuals to learn to manage their anxiety and reduce the severity of their symptoms. Me. Hmm. Sounds like CBT is focused on managing symptoms rather than eliminating the root of the symptoms. The AI. Yes, that's correct. CBT is focused on helping individuals to manage their symptoms of social anxiety disorder rather than eliminating the underlying causes of the disorder. Social anxiety disorder is a chronic condition that is thought to be caused by a combination of genetics and life experiences and changing those underlying causes may be difficult or impossible. Me? Hmm. CBT sounds like a predominantly cognitive approach. But people with social anxiety know their thoughts don't make sense. Most of them know perfectly well that not every single person in the world is busy judging them or that embarrassing themselves will lead to their life being over. They're not stupid. But it's the emotions connected to the thoughts that are the problem. It's emotionalized thoughts that are the problem, which are much harder to change with CBT, I meant, if it's even possible. Someone who has the thought, I'm not good enough, might change their thinking and come up with counter examples. And they're coming up with all sorts of reasons for why they're indeed good enough. And then they feel some relief in the comfort of their own home. But as soon as they're around certain people or certain situations that trigger them, those negative emotions of insecurity, shame, self-doubt and so on will get triggered again. Because just changing your thoughts might reduce those feelings a bit, they don't release them. The AI. It is true that for people with social anxiety disorder, it can be difficult to change the emotionalized thoughts that are at the root of their anxiety. The negative emotions connected to these thoughts can be intense and can be triggered by certain people or situations. Changing thoughts alone might bring some relief, but it doesn't necessarily release the negative emotions connected to them. That is why CBT for social anxiety disorder also includes exposure therapy. Me. Right. But for most people with intense social anxiety, exposure therapy is too scary or too overwhelming or can even make their symptoms worse. So CBT's changing of thoughts doesn't release the emotions connected to the thoughts and exposure is not an option either. 
On top of that, many of them judge themselves for being weak and inferior, that they cannot do these exposures that their therapists tell them is the only solution. The robot. You are correct that for some people with intense SAD, exposure therapy can be too overwhelming or even make their symptoms worse. Exposure therapy can be a challenging and difficult process for some individuals. It's also true that for some, just changing their thoughts through CBT alone may not be enough to release the negative emotions connected to those thoughts. This can lead to feelings of frustration, disappointment, and self-judgment. Me? Hmm, sounds like CBT or exposure therapy is more for people with milder forms of social anxiety. The AI. Cognitive behavioral therapy and exposure therapy are effective treatment options for social anxiety disorder and are considered to be the most well-established and effective forms of treatment for SAD. However, it is important to know that not all individuals with SAD may respond to these treatment options. And some people with more severe forms of SAD may not be able to tolerate exposure therapy. For people with milder forms of SAD, CBT and exposure therapy can be effective in reducing symptoms and helping them to manage their anxiety in social situations. But for people with more severe forms of SAD, other treatment options may be needed. Me? Okay, so in summary, CBT and exposure therapy are the most well-established approaches, but CBT focuses on symptoms management. It doesn't get rid of the causes of these symptoms. And social anxiety disorder is seen as a chronic condition that can be managed but not overcome completely. It's focused on helping people better deal with the anxiety and improve their life quality. Because the changing of thoughts does not neutralize the emotions associated with the thoughts. And so they still get triggered, but they instead think in more empowered ways. The fear is still there, but they think about it in better ways. Now to aid CBT in getting better results, what is recommended is exposure therapy. But that's too scary for a lot of people or gets them too anxious, which results in them not doing it and often judging themselves to be broken or weak or losers. Or if they force themselves to face their fears, if they have severe social anxiety, it may even worsen their symptoms. The reply. In summary, CBT and exposure therapy are the most well-established and effective forms of treatment. However, it's important to note that these treatments focus on managing symptoms and improving quality of life rather than eliminating the root cause of the disorder. SCD is considered to be a chronic condition that can be managed but not overcome completely. CBT focuses on changing negative thoughts and beliefs that are contributing to the anxiety, but it doesn't necessarily neutralize the emotional associations that are connected with the thoughts. Exposure therapy is often used to help with desensitizing the individual to the situations or interactions that trigger the anxiety, and it is considered to be an important component of CBT. But for some people with severe SAD, exposure therapy can be too overwhelming and may worsen their symptoms. So in other words, some people are just completely stuck and are maybe even worse off. That's also what happened for me. I did those exposures, I tried changing my thoughts and it just wouldn't improve. And as a result, I was fearing that I was broken, that I was the toughest case, that there was no hope for me and that I would have to live with my social anxiety for the rest of my life. And you know, I didn't have social anxiety until I was 11 or 12. And so that was unacceptable. I'm like, there must be a solution. And I kept searching and searching and eventually I found EFT, emotional freedom techniques. And that's what I'm gonna ask the robot about. Now, my question, how about EFT for social anxiety? The response, there are some studies that have found EFT to be effective in reducing symptoms of SAD. However, the research on EFT as a treatment for SAD is still limited and more studies are needed to confirm its effectiveness my response and the big benefit of EFT is that it doesn't just focus on managing the symptoms contrary to CBT and exposure therapy EFT also predominantly focuses on neutralizing the causes of the symptoms the reply 
While it's true that EFT focuses on neutralizing the underlying causes of symptoms, it's important to note that the research on EFT is still in its early stages and more research is needed to confirm its effectiveness and to determine how it compares to other forms of treatment. Here's a little interlude for me again. And this is part of what pisses me off. That's the general idea, but that's not true. There is lots of solid science, which I'm now gonna get into. Here we go. Me. My understanding is that there are 102 scientific studies backing up EFT's effectiveness. There are five meta studies that have been done, all showing large effect sizes, very large effect sizes. And I believe that a meta study is the highest standard of research, even above randomized control trials. Most of psychotherapy only has one meta study done. So it's in the top 10% of most researched psychotherapy techniques. There's a meta study done for EFT on depression, a meta study done for EFT for anxiety, and a meta study done for EFT on PTSD, all showing very large effect sizes, proving that EFT is effective for them. So there is strong scientific support for the claim that EFT tapping works. This support comes from more than 100 peer-reviewed clinical studies. EFT has a number of systematic reviews, meta-analyses, and randomized controlled trials. A significant number of these have been published in reputable mainstream scientific journals. The strongest evidence for EFT stepping's effectiveness is for PTSD, depression, and anxiety. The robot. It is true that there's a growing body of research on the effectiveness of emotional freedom technique, including a number of meta-analyses that have been conducted. These studies have found that EFT can be effective in reducing symptoms of anxiety, depression, and PTSD, and that it can be as effective as other forms of treatment, such as CBT and medication. Meta-analyses are considered to be a high standard of research as they provide a comprehensive overview of the current state of research on a particular topic. It is true that EFT tapping has a number of systematic reviews, meta-analyses, and randomized controlled trials, and a significant number have been published in reputable mainstream scientific journals. Strongest evidence for EFT tapping's effectiveness is for PTSD, depression, and anxiety. In other words, exactly what I said. I continue. Isn't it the case that there's a significant lack of therapists specialized in dealing with social anxiety? And isn't that because the results are disappointing? And isn't it a real struggle to help someone overcome social anxiety with CBT and exposure therapy? Bit provocative, <laughs> but uh, here we go. The AI. It is true that there is a shortage of mental health professionals who specialize in treating social anxiety disorder. That can make it difficult for people with SED to find a therapist who is experienced in treating this condition. However, it's not necessarily because the results are disappointing, but rather it's a complex condition that requires a specialized skill set and not all therapists have the experience and expertise to treat it. It's important to note that these treatments focus on managing symptoms and improving quality of life rather than eliminating the root cause of the disorder. SED is considered to be a chronic condition that can be managed but not overcome completely. All right, little interlude. And that is what I completely disagree with. That's part of why I'm putting out this video and I'm so excited to have this conversation with this robot. I've been wanting to have this conversation for the longest time. So this is, this is exciting. Anyway, let's continue. Now we're on to solutions. I go, someone might have a traumatic memory of where he was ridiculed in front of the class. Here, the meaning he might've made was, people are out to get me. According to Dr. Robert Scher, one of the world's leading trauma researchers, traumatic memory does not get fully processed and is stored in procedural active memory. The memory of trauma is added to the amygdala's library of threatening experiences. The amygdala is a part of your brain, the alarm system of your brain. Okay, just FYI. I continue. And it is stored here in that library of the amygdala. And your amygdala uses these traumatic memories to compare them with present day life experiences. When the amygdala perceives a current day social situation as similar to a traumatic one, so in other words, when it perceives a threat 
through the learned beliefs, it rings the alarm bell, aka it fires off the fight, flight, freeze response. This sets off a cascade of responses like heart racing, pupils dilating, focusing on the worst case scenario, and so on. All of the known symptoms that are labeled as anxiety. One of the key things you do during EFT treatment is to uncover the traumatic memories that cause or contribute to the social anxiety problem. Now, there certainly isn't always an obvious specific trauma that kickstarts social anxiety. Often it is relational trauma too. And in most cases, it's a combination. But if there's a specific trauma related to a particular social fear, and there nearly always is, EFT neutralizes the emotions connected to this memory, often in less than an hour. And it uncovers the meaning that was made at that time, which formed the belief and neutralizes its associated emotions. With the trauma fully processed, your amygdala no longer has to warn you away from it because the emotional pain is no longer there and the associated meaning is dissolved. This can lead to actually completely getting rid of fear and anxiety in a specific social situation, rather than just managing the anxiety by thinking about it better. Hence, EFT is a very viable option to neutralize social anxiety. The reply. You are correct that traumatic memories can play a significant role in the development of social anxiety disorder. According to Dr. Robert Scare, a traumatic memory is not fully processed and is stored in procedure or active memory, which can lead to the amygdala perceiving current day social situations as similar to a traumatic one and activating the fight, flight or freeze response, resulting in symptoms of anxiety. Emotional freedom technique is a type of energy psychology that aims to neutralize the emotional impact of traumatic memories and beliefs that contribute to social anxiety disorder. By tapping on specific points in the body while focusing on a traumatic memory or belief, EFT aims to release the emotional charge connected to the memory, which can lead to reducing or eliminating the associated anxiety. EFT can be a viable option for neutralizing social anxiety, and it's essential to work with a qualified EFT practitioner who has experience in treating SAD. Me. So let me get this straight. One, social anxiety is the result of an activation of the fight, flight, freeze response. Two, this response gets activated as a result of the amygdala perceiving threat, for example, the threat of rejection. Three, that perception is governed by beliefs, aka emotionalized thoughts. Four, EFT can neutralize these emotionalized thoughts or beliefs. Five, by using EFT to neutralize the beliefs responsible for the perception of threat. Six, there no longer is that perception of threat. Seven, no perception of threat equals no fight, flight, freeze activation equals no social anxiety. The reply, that is a summary of how EFT can be used to help with social anxiety disorder. One, social anxiety is a result of the fight, flight, freeze response getting activated in response to perceived social threat. Two, the amygdala, a part of the brain that is responsible for detecting threats, perceives the social threat based on learned beliefs and past experiences. Three, these beliefs, also known as emotionalized thoughts, can be deeply ingrained and are often formed from past traumatic experiences. Four, EFT aims to neutralize the emotional impact of these traumatic memories and beliefs that contribute to social anxiety disorder by tapping on specific points in the body while focusing on a traumatic memory or belief. Five, by neutralizing the emotional charge connected to these memories EFT aims to reduce or eliminate the associated anxiety. Six, with the emotional pain neutralized, the associated belief is dissolved. The amygdala no longer perceives the social situation as a threat. Seven, with no perception of threat, the fight, flight, freeze response is not activated resulting in a reduction or elimination of social anxiety symptoms. 
All right, I hope this message inspires you to get rid of your social anxiety once and for all. And I just want to say, just because tapping can do that uh, doesn't mean you're going to get rid of your social anxiety just like that. It's still a challenging issue, but it is such a world of difference when you actually have a technique with which you can neutralize the negative emotions, the excessive negative emotions that is, and you can process emotionalized thoughts and beliefs that cause the perception of threat. Meaning you actually have the tools to systematically chip away at the layers of social anxiety so that it begins to shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink. And you get triggered less frequently. The anxiety stays around for less long and it becomes less and less and less intense because your natural state, even if you've had social anxiety for your whole life, you're not born socially anxious. Little babies do not have social anxiety. So even if you've had it for a long time, your natural state is one of ease, where you're comfortable, where you enjoy connecting with others. And whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, it doesn't matter. And how long you've been suffering doesn't matter. You can make progress. You can get better. And it's amazing what can happen when you start applying EFT. Now, I am all for a update of social anxiety treatment worldwide where we merge the best of traditional psychology with energy psychology. And energy psychology is an umbrella term, was, it can be seen as an um, umbrella, uh, and one of the spokes in the umbrella is EFT, but there are other amazing techniques. I just don't talk much about them because there's not as, as much scientific evidence for it as there is for EFT. I've been coaching people with um, social anxiety disorder since 2009 using tapping. And I talk more about tapping because there's so much uh, evidence of it. It is such an exciting thing when you actually have a technique that is so simple as just this. I know it looks silly, but I used it to, uh, to overcome my own social anxiety and I've managed to help lots of others do the same. You can see video testimonials on my YouTube channel. I hope this really inspires you. So learn about tapping, learn how to apply it to overcome social anxiety disorder. And um, you know, uh, I have a mini course called The Seven Secrets to Social Confidence in which I teach you about EFT, what it is, how to apply it, what to do when it doesn't work, and I give you a big picture overview of how to overcome your social anxiety completely. And I talk about the three main keys to effortless social ease, which is your natural state. And you don't have to change into somebody else. You're becoming your most natural, authentic self. So to get that, go to bit.ly forward slash social confidence now. All right. Hope this inspires you. Please share this video far and wide, okay? It's time to open up this conversation. This is Sebastian from socialanxietysolutions.com. Cheers to your social confidence. Bye for now.